Hello everyone and welcome back to Killer Shrew Fans Killer Toy Reviews. We are so close to the end of our lineup for Killer Shrew Fans 12 Days of Reviews. I can see the light. I am so excited to be so close to being done. But in order to celebrate, you are going to be getting a very special review today. Today, you will be getting three for the price of one. Today, we will be taking a look at some very special figures. We will not only be taking a look at the first iteration of the Batat Tyrannosaurus Rex, but also the second iteration of the Batat Tyrannosaurus Rex, and finally the third iteration of the Batat Tyrannosaurus Rex. All three will be reviewed right here and right now on Killer True Fans to Killer Toy Reviews. Now, I, uh, my knowledge on the Batat line is a little shaky. I know they came out sometime in the mid-90s. Um, then the uh, series ran its course, and uh, they kind of disappeared. But then uh, in the, sometime in the 2000s, Terra by Batat started releasing repaints of the original lineup, along with a few new ones thrown into the mix. But what else do I know about it? Well, I know that these original Batat models, no matter how you slice it, are some of the most sought-after dinosaur toys in the toy collecting community. Um, that's why I'm very excited and lucky to say that I own all three iterations of the Batat Rexes here, and I could not be more excited to take a closer look at them for you today. So we're going to start off with the first iteration, then move on to the second iteration, and finally take a look at the third iteration. So without Without further ado, let's do this! So here you can see all three of the Batat Rexes standing next to each other. On the far left you have got the original iteration, it is in this walking position, but it is a little front heavy, so it was given snow pad feet during the second iteration, which do allow it to stand, but I guess it was unpopular because they chose to re-sculpt it entirely for a third version. If we start off by looking at the first version, as you can see, the detailing on this thing is very subtle, but I do absolutely love the head of it. It looks incredibly powerful. The teeth are individually sculpted. The eye is a nice orange color with a black pupil, and I love the crests over the eye as well. On the neck, you've got some lovely wrinkling and scaling detail going on. Again, the scaling detailing is subtle, but the uh, folds of skin are incredibly well sculpted and do a lot to add to the lifelike nature of this Batat model. As the creature turns its head slightly to the right, uh, the skin bunches up and folds in a nice naturalistic way, and once you hit the midsection, there's more of that natural folding of the skin around the arm and the thigh, along with some subtle scaling going on across the uh, board there. Uh, as you can see, the texturation continues all the way down to the tip of the tail. It's really all about the wrinkles on this one. Uh, which um, isn't necessarily unfortunate, but the scaling kind of gets lost in the shuffle there. Moving back up the opposite side, as you can see, it is really the same story in terms of the overall detailing, in terms of the wrinkling, folds of skin, all that sort of thing. Um, there's some lovely pushing up skin as the thigh pushes it against the um, belly there, and some lovely wrinkles down around the gut region. And then we come up to the head, and you can see the powerful jaw muscles sculpted onto the lower mandible there, and a little bit of the roof of the mouth as well, along with all the individually sculpted teeth. As you can see, this Tyrannosaurus Rex is sculpted in a striding position with the back right leg bracing against the ground and pushing the creature forward. Um, nice powerful looking calves there, very bird-like active ankles going on, and I love the wrinkling down around the toe claws, uh, toes, excuse me, as the feet are pushed up into the ankle region there. And again, you've got some lovely wrinkling detailing going on on the legs, pardon my camera focus, but yes, nice powerful looking calf. The musculature on this thing is absolutely awesome for such an old model. Taking a look at the arms, they are appropriately short. As you can see, the hand claws are painted a nice, sleek black. And again, I'm having focusing issues. you have to forgive me for that. But the arms are rimmed by some lovely wrinklage down around the sagging gut region, which is absolutely awesome. Taking a look at the uh, second version, as you can see, it's very similar to the original. I think the only difference is the coloration is a bit brighter on this one, and I keep bumping my camera. You'll have to forgive me for that. But yes, yeah, really the same story in terms of the detailing, the subtle scaling, wrinkles, folds of skin, all of that 
that was present on the first iteration is also present here. It's really the same sculpt, it's just been given a uh, sort of more vibrant paint scheme and it has been given the uh, snowshoe uh, feet which we will get to, but yes, the detailing on these models, though subtle, is certainly enough to get the job done and make it a believable looking dinosaur toy. Uh, yeah, and they're really, really so close to each other looking at them. As you can see, you've got the uh, same posing going on on this one with the T-Rex taking a stride forward. Again, the musculature is great. And the uh, snowshoes have been added, and they do give this creature some extra balance. It does stand unlike the first iteration, which is absolutely awesome given the active pose of it. And they did not sacrifice the sort of beefier nature of it either, which I applaud. Um, unfortunately, this sculpt would be retooled in the third iteration, as you can see, this is a much simpler pose, um, and a much simpler design overall, and even then, this one doesn't really stand up all that easy, um, but in terms of the sculptural detail, uh, as you can see, if we start at the head, it's really the same story, uh, it's just the proportions that have been changed. The scaling is a bit more prevalent here, and the uh, wrinkling in the neck is a little less um, there, excuse me, um, but the uh, musculature, or excuse me, the wrinkling on the body has been addressed, and the scaling, like I said, is a bit more apparent on this third iteration, which is really the only thing that I like more about it. As you can see, the detailing continues all the way down to the tip of the tail, and if we move back up the opposite side of the model, you can get a better look at the detailing that this side has to offer. As you can see, the scaling is a lot more visible on this model, but unfortunately the wrinkling has kind of been sacrificed for that, which is unfortunate. Uh, while we're on the subject of changes in proportion, as you can see, the skull on this T-Rex, the third iteration has a much narrower skull, and uh, I think that is um, unfortunate. I love the bulky nature of the first one and how threatening it looked. Taking a look at the legs, the legs are still pretty okay on this model. As you can see, the musculature has been addressed, the wrinkling is all there, I love the kneecaps and everything, but the, uh, uh, the sort of neutral pose that it's in doesn't allow for a lot of musculature. In terms of the paint scheme, it's pretty similar across the board. You've kind of got the yellow underbelly with a green dorsal striping, green legs, yellow stripes on the legs, and then yellow dots running along the uh, back. Like I said, it's much more saturated in the second iteration than in the first iteration here. I think I prefer the colors of the first iteration. I like the uh, more muted gold schemes. And then on the third iteration, it's much more vibrant, and unfortunately it was given this really glossy finish which I do not care for on the model overall I think it detracts from it makes it look a lot more toy like instead of like a model in terms of the sizing on these things from the tip of the tail to the front of the snout the second iteration measures 11 inches which is about 26 centimeters and then from the base all the way to the highest point you're looking at right around four or excuse me four and a half inches which is about 11 and a half centimeters the first iteration is really the same in terms of its overall um, sizing. Like I said, they just added the snowshoes, 11 inches or 26 centimeters. And then from the base to the highest point, again, you're looking at right around four and a half inches or 11 centimeters. And finally, for the third version, this is the one that changed a bit. So from the tip of the tail to the front of the snout, again, ele about 11 and a half inches on this one, about 26 centimeters or so. And then from the base all the way to the highest point, you're looking at right around four and a half inches. So they're all pretty similar in this terms of the size, but the third iteration is a bit bigger. For size comparison, here it is with the Batat Utah Raptor, which we did take a look at during last year's Killer Toy Reviews. Um, the 12 days of reviews, excuse me. Um, and as you can see, these two sides up kind of in a cool way, kind of like the Jurassic Park uh, theme going on there. And then, of course, we brought in our good buddy Chris Pratt, who has decided that of all the safer places to be, this is probably not one of them. Unfortunately, these T-Rex these are too small, but uh, I think they work kind of as a juvenile pack, which is kind of cool when compared to human figures. Well, everyone, there you have it. That is going to do it for our look at the Batat Tyrannosaurus Rex, all three versions. If you were to ask me which of these models I prefer, I would probably say I really do like the first one the most, given its more muted color schemes and uh, the bulkiness and then the active pose. That all um, 
makes it a win for me. The only downside is the fact that it has the balancing issues, but that was addressed with the Series 2, so if you want a good compromise, Series 2 is probably the best of them if you want something that balances and looks good. I mean, the only difference is the fact that the paint is more saturated, more vibrant on that one, which I can definitely live with. If you were to ask me for an overall rating for these models, I would give the first iteration a solid 8 out of 10, the second iteration another 8 out of 10, and then the third iteration a 7 out of 10. Um, as always, I would love to hear what you guys think of this model. Do you own it? Are you lucky enough to own any of these Batat Rexes? Which one's your favorite? Um, do you have any other Batat models? If so, which one of the Batat models are your favorite? Let me know all of your thoughts down in the comments section below. If you're looking to get one of these, I should mention, eBay is definitely your best bet. The third iteration pops up quite often and can sometimes go for quite low. I got mine for around $30 or so, but these first two iterations are much more rare and are going to be a lot harder to find. If you're lucky, you might just come across them for cheap like I did. Um, anywho, that's going to do it for us today. If you enjoyed our review, don't be afraid to let us know by hitting that like button. And don't forget to subscribe on your way out. We got one more day of Killer Shrew Fans uh, Killer Toy Reviews as part of our 12 days of reviews, and it's going to be a doozy, so stay tuned for that. All right, thanks again for tuning in, and that's going to do it for us today. Killer Shrew Fan out.